Welcome back to the All Seasons channel. Today, Cameron and I are going to be working on this pop-up here. It's a fine looking unit. It is a 1999 model Jayco. Um, it has got at least a couple of broken cables. I can see at least one bad bracket and I don't know if we're going to be able to get any parts for this thing. Um, when the customer brought it to me, the door came open in transit. He lost the crank handle. So I'm just hoping that I can get parts for this thing. Um, I mean, I had a hard time finding the crank handle for it. Uh, the crank handle they ended up buying does, is not supposed to fit any Jayco ever made. But it fits this one. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I tried to call... Uh, Hannah RV parts, that's where uh, Doug got his parts for his pop-up when I, I couldn't seem to find them from the manufacturer. Uh, I'll put a link to, to that video right up here uh, if you want to watch that one when um, me and Doug worked on his pop-up. Um, called them and because of the increased volume right now, they're not doing any special orders. What they have on the shelf is what they're selling. Well, they didn't have any of the cable brackets for this, the lift in the brackets for the lift system. They didn't have any of those on their website, so I'm assuming that means they're not selling any of those right now. Uh, called Jayco. Jayco goes, nope, we don't we don't carry parts for them. And I was like, well, that's weird because you build them, but anyhow. Uh, so they told me to call Canvas Replacements and um, called them, and they said, do you have the VIN number? I said, yeah. I gave them the VIN number, and they go. Um, it's one character short. I'm like, that's all the customer gave me. He got it, uh, got it right off of his uh, title. And they go, well, it's one character short. So I called the customer back. I said, are you sure about this VIN number? And he re-verified. Re and he said, that's all that's on the title. So, I don't even know if we're going to be able to get parts for this thing. But I'm going to, me and Cameron's going to get it raised up today. And I'm hoping that uh, maybe inside one of the cabinet doors, a lot of times they will put a data tag. And I'm hoping this has a, has a data tag on it. And I can verify the VIN. I've been, I've been up on the tongue and looked around and under. Uh, can't find a VIN number up there. If we don't find anything inside, we're going to go over the the frame with a fine tooth comb, see if we can find the VIN number. Should be stamped in the frame somewhere or be on a tag. So anyhow, I know that's a long introduction, but it's been a long process to this point just to get a stupid crank handle. It took me almost, uh, well, a week and a half to find and get a crank handle. So um, here we go. We're going to get this thing raised up. We're going to show you how we do it. We do it with uh, hopefully the two rear cables still function and supposedly the both front cables don't so we're going to use uh, jacks and two fours and blocks of wood and very carefully safely hopefully <laughs> get get this thing raised up um, and hopefully the rear works so we can at least use the crank handle that I've got for them <laughs> and uh, so we're going to see how this goes and uh, y'all uh, y'all hang on because this could be a bumpy ride you got anything to say Cameron? Nope. No, nothing. I think you said it all. I said it all. I got all the words today, and you got none. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> The, the front legs are actually not attached to the roof anymore and uh, apparently they were just glued. I've never seen such a thing. It had like, I'll show you in a little bit, it has uh, like a plastic pad up in the roof and another little plastic pad on the leg 
and it looks to me like it was just glued. So we're going to stop right here, see if we can get the beds pulled out, and we are going to um, see if we can find a VIN number for this and see if I can get parts before I go too far, before we get it all the way up. Really need to see if I can get parts for it. So sorry about the furnace noise, but it's cold today. I'm not cutting that furnace off. It cuts itself off when it's warm enough. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cut this thing off for a minute and uh, get the get this bed out a little bit and go in and see if we can find a bin number. If we can't find one inside, we'll see if we can find one on the tongue somewhere. So y'all hang on. All right. Well, uh, the crank handle fit. It worked. Uh, we got it up some. The the front legs are not attached to the roof and. Uh, Neither are the rear ones, so I'm gonna show you this. This is pretty crazy, I think. Uh, yeah, let, let me show you what's going on. This is what we're gonna call the leg, because I don't know what else to call it. Um, this is what you know guides the top, you know, as it's going up and down. Um, I'll put a link to one of my other pop-up videos up here, and um, kind of explain to you how the spring actually pushes these up. And uh, so, yeah. These, there's a plastic pad here on top of the leg. There's another plastic piece that's mounted to the top of the pop-up. And apparently at one time they were glued. So what happens is the cables broke on this one. This is the left front. The cables are broke on the left front and the right front. So this leg doesn't follow, doesn't follow the, the lid. So what's happening is because the front of the, the whole front of the, the top is not really attached to the camper except by the canvas. So the higher we go, the crazier things get. So we stopped right here, uh, did find the VIN number, didn't find it inside, I actually found it on a cross member in the back of the camper. Most of your VIN numbers, you'll find them on the tongue. But this one, this fine unit right here, found it back there on the, the second cross member from the back. Got the bumper, and then the next cross members where I found the VIN number. Um, so yeah, both front legs are not attached to the camper, and because the springs are not pushing the legs up, it's not working properly. Then, we figured out that the rear are not attached either. I'm gonna let Cameron hold this camera so it's nice and steady, and I'm gonna show you here. Hopefully it'll show up in the camera. You see that movement? Neither of the rear legs is attached to the top either. So gravity is the only thing keeping it on the leg. So <laughs> anyhow, like I said, I got the van. I'm going to see if I can even get parts for it. Cameron, what's your, uh, what's your new word for the day? Cassette toilet. You said in a sentence. This camper has a cassette toilet. What is a cassette toilet, you may ask? <laughs> Cameron's going to show you. Here. Show him what a cassette toilet is. Go ahead. I got the camera. What is that, Cameron? Basically, you poop in it, and then you take it, dump it out somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron, when he woke up this morning, never dreamed that he would use the word cassette toilet in a sentence. Never. But yet, never. here you are. You have used cassette toilet in a sentence. So, Just learning new things every day. You're, I'm, 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 very, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> All right. Enough shenanigans. We're going to get out of here and uh, see if we can get some parts for this thing. So, uh, we'll uh, catch up with you guys and gals uh, when I have more news.
All right. Well, there's there's how you raise one up. <laughs> very slowly, very carefully. Just take your time, cause the thing can hurt you. Uh, we just put a screw, drilled a hole in those two plastic pieces, shot a screw in it, and that held those legs up. So it made things a lot more stable. So we didn't have all that. And uh, nobody died. That's always, that's always a really good thing. Once we got the legs actually secured to the top, it, it got a lot better, because it was precarious. Um, <laughs> before we did that uh, so but we did um, we also get the bad floor bracket out I'll tell you what let's talk about the bracket first um, this is a 1999 model Jayco and best we can figure uh, I'm pretty sure this camper was built by aliens in their backyard on their home planet and it was brought here because Jayco didn't build this thing they have no records of a 1999 model pop-up. They have no parts for this thing, no parts listings. It's like it just fell out of the sky and poof, there was a 99 model Jayco pop-up. Um, so I can't get parts for this thing. So I'm going to have to make this floor bracket. This will be a first. I mean, I love fabricating and uh, probably not going to show you that. I'll show you the what it looks like before and I'll show you what it looks like after because this is not a fabrication channel this is an RV channel um, and this is our channel so uh, really need people to start stepping up and participating it'd be awesome um, if you want to you don't have to there is the floor bracket that does not exist Jayco did not build this so I do not, do not know who built it This uh, pulley, this pulley was on the end of this bracket, and it should have been like that, but it was like this, and it had the it had the pusher spring crimped, uh, crimped here. So I cut all this part just so I could make sure the crimper, just so I could make sure the pusher spring was okay. So, um, like I say, we're going to fabricate this. A couple oddities, uh, I've never seen them weld two floor brackets together. They did on this one, two places, but not on the bottom. Cause I would not have taken this piece of track out over here. I'd have just reached in there and cut these welds if had I known. But I figured for sure that it was, I knew it was welded on top and I figured well surely to goodness it's welded on the bottom, but it's not. So, um, so this one piece, so this one piece here is all I have to make. Uh, it's pretty simple. So once I get this, uh, once I get my new tube, get this all cleaned up, that'll just go right on that corner, just like that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. So I'll have to build, build a floor, floor bracket. A couple other little oddities. I have never seen that kind of end on a pop-up cable. This goes in the slug. We'll, we'll, you'll learn more about that slug later. But this goes in that slug to pull pull a cable. I have never seen an end like that on a pop-up cable. It's usually just a, a furl. It's doubled over and put the crimp furl on it or swage a furl. Even the other end of the cable's odd for a pop-up. I've never seen them do, do build cables like this for a pop-up. So it's whatever. Uh, we'll, we'll make it work and uh, we'll get this uh, fine unit put back together and uh, Hopefully this gentleman can use it for years to come. So we're going to quit for today, and we'll be back another day. To you, it will seem just like a split second. To us, it might be two or three days. I don't know. But anyhow. Well, I told you I wouldn't show you building the bracket, but I'll show you the end result. So we had to replace this piece of square tubing uh, because the other one was all bent up. We got this bracket and this pulley off, straightened it up, and reused it. And uh, so there's the new bracket. That's, uh, that's the first time I ever had to make a new bracket for a pop-up. But when you can't get parts, you just can't get parts. And I tell you, I'm really thinking, I don't know if I'm going to do any more recabling the, these old pop-ups because you just can't get parts for them. And that's, that's just, that makes it tough when you can't get parts because, I mean, you know, this one was pretty simple, but the next one may be very difficult. A lot of, 
you know, I don't know. But anyhow, I don't know if I'm going to do any more of these pop-ups, so you better enjoy this video. Yeah, we even found the, um, the sister bracket to this one in the other end. Because I think both ends are the same, only they're mirror image each other. It was starting to do the exact same thing. I welded a little extra brace on this one to keep that from tweaking again. And I'm going to go in there and uh, uh, try and straighten that bracket up a little bit and weld an exact same brace on it so it doesn't do that again too so so yeah uh, like i say we'll get these brackets mounted um and then we're going to start pulling cables so uh, we'll be back we'll be back when we start pulling cables all right we're getting ready to start pulling the new cable through this is our old cable this is one of them that was uh, broken and i've got these I've got one of these, I, I, I wish I knew the technical term of this. I've always just called it a Chinese puzzle thingy. Um, uh, you now we're gonna push, push this up on the old cable. Till it's about halfway. There we are. Now just to hold it, put a little bit of electrical tape on it. By little, I mean little. So I'll explain, explain what I'm doing here in just a minute. All right, we got the old cable pushed up in there about halfway. Now Cameron's gonna give me the new cable. Here's our brand new cable. We're gonna do the same thing on this. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Push them till they touch each other, like that. And put a little bit of tape on this side, just to keep things from sliding apart. Mainly keep stuff from catching. Like I said, I'll explain this, explain this here in just a second. Okay, so there we go. There's our old cable and our new cable. They're now attached in the middle with this thing, whatever this thing's called. Here's, our, here's one of our front tracks. There's our other front track. Cable goes in the wall right there and starts going through pulleys. I'm hoping you can show, see that. I don't know. Um, anyhow, it goes around that pulley right there. Oh, maybe that's a better view of it. That's the back side of it. Um, so those cables, they go around that pulley there. Then they're inside the wall between the exterior wall and the interior wall cable runs back through here and it goes up over the wheel well there's a pulley right here there's a pulley down here there's a pulley right here there's a pulley right here another pulley right there and then it runs back here and then it runs through another pulley just like was on the front and it turns 90 degrees and goes through the back over to the winch which we'll see here in a little bit so We've got those two pieces of cable attached together and we're going to tr attempt to pull the old cable out and pull the new cable in at the same time. If this doesn't work, what are we going to do, Cameron? If this, oh, we don't want to do that, do we? Because how many holes would we have to cut in a while? Probably many holes there <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we want to try to avoid that, don't we, Cameron? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, all right, we're gonna get started here. Um, I'm gonna let Cameron go in and pull the, the cable. I'm gonna feed the new one through, and we're just gonna go nice and slow and easy and not have any mistakes. So, I don't know what y'all be able to see, but here we go. All right, Cameron's just pulling slowly, easily, evenly. Hang on just a sec, Cameron. Oh, okay, there we went. 
Okay, keep it going. All right, we're gonna hit our first piece of tape here. I'm gonna put just a little bit of tension on this cable so you'll notice a little more resistance now. Go ahead. All right, I'll hold the other one. Now I'm just holding a little bit of tension on this new cable so that our, our plastic grippy thingy does not let loose on us. So here pretty soon he's going to come to another pulley. All right, hold up camera. All right, go ahead. So I'm holding this cable down here kind of straight so it's going in the pulley straight. All right, we got the new cable pulled through the wall. Now we are getting it run through our, our new bracket. And it should be coming out right here. In a minute now, camera's pushing it through. There it is, boom. All right, camera, got her. So we got our new cable. Uh, there's the end of it. We got our slug. Find the camera, there we go. There's our slug. What happens is we, we crimp a furl, or swage a furl on this cable. Man, I can't figure out where the camera's at. Swage a furl on that, in that cable. It goes into this slug. The slug slides into our square tubing, our floor brackets, and then the slug actually pushes the spring up and that's what raises the camper up on a crazy system ain't it slide our new furl in i might have to cut this cable off because it's got a uh, you probably can't see it but it's got some little strings on it yeah i'm gonna have to cut that cable off it's uh hard to work with when you got them little little hairs hanging out just use our handy dandy cable cutters cut a couple inches off now we can slide our furrow on, slide it on, and then slide it, put it back in the other way. Slide it pretty close, pretty close to the end there. And now we're going to crimp it or swage it. I know when you're, when you're dealing with cable, you're swaging. But you're also crimping. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. About about messed up because we need to pull. We need to pull as much of this cable through this furl as possible, like that. Make sure we have a little bit sticking out the the back, the other cable. Now we can swage. Put it in our crimper or swage tool. Make sure everything looks hunky dory. It does. And start the pumping. Somebody in my in my video that I did on the on this tool, it's like, sure wish we could have seen the tool work. I don't remember his name, but and here you are. Here's the here's the tool actually working. When, it's, when it gets to the end, you know it. All right, there's one. We're gonna do at least one more, maybe two. Seems like, kinda seems like it takes three to actually crimp the whole furl. Done. 
Yep, we're gonna do one more. So we did each did each end, but there's a little bit in the middle that didn't get didn't get cramped. So we're gonna do it. Try and line it up exactly where it needs to be. See, all this thing does is just, it's like a little hydraulic jack. And when you pump it, it just applies pressure to the furl. Then when you release the, the little release knob, it has spring loaded, pulls it back. So there you go, uh, the gentleman that wanted to see it work. There you go, that's how she works. So now, all we do is slide our cable inside of our slug. Sometimes it's easier said than done. Let's put our cable in our slug, like so. And then that goes inside of the square, that goes inside the square tube and pushes that spring. Now we go to the other end.